when was the moment that you kind of fell in love with production? That you kind of just, whether it was just you hit something on drum machine or like, oh shit, this is this is it. Like, what was that moment for you? I, I was idolizing other producers at a very young age. So I used to listen to Marley Maul a lot and Howie T a lot. And um, later on, there was Teddy Riley, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Rodney Jenkins and all the dope, you know, black R&B music, you know, that, that Cats was doing. You know, Terry Lewis, Jimmy Jam, um, the list goes on. Um, and I, I, you know, that's how it starts for me, you know, the, the inspiration of wanting to know who's the man behind the music. You know, that was always a big question for me. Even when it was the, the the person DJing in a rap group, like Cold Crush Brothers or something, you know what I'm saying? Charlie Chase, you know, um, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, you know, that, that type of thing. Um, where you had the DJ started starting to get some light, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, um, even in the name, you know what I'm saying? Like, to see a DJ's name first, you know what I'm saying? It's, it was, was kind of where where I saw like Grandmaster Flash. You know, I'm like, wow, okay. They let it off with Grandmaster Flash, Flash and the Furious Five. You know what I'm saying? That type of thing was like where it all started. What was the first beat you made? Damn, that's a hard one. Uh, I was messing around with a whole bunch of little toys um, that were... I, I was able to be around and um Eddie F had a lot of you know equipment that, that I used to play with you know what I'm saying and I he, you know I was playing with a lot of stuff you know between his house and, and Molly's house things that I seen um um and you know took the SB1200 home one day from Eddie F's crib and uh, probably some of the first beats I made were pause button tapes you know pause button beats you know what I'm saying yeah and then graduated from there that's how it basically is you know for a DJ that wanting that wants to be a producer you know we, we would get our ideas going with pause button beats or you know just looping the same part over and over pausing the same part over and over again or and then you know eventually graduating it to the drum machine and learning how to use the drum machines to sample you know what I'm saying and and some of the earliest beats that I made first was just like normal nothings <laughs> just like <laughs> just 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 like oh wow I, I just I got a new toy let me play with this you know what I'm saying yeah so you know I, I, I played with it till I made it made more sense for me you know what I'm saying just kept playing with it kept playing with it kept learning about it kept you know you know picking up little things from other people you know and just like acquiring it to, to what I wanted to learn how to do and that's and and then it, didn't, it just get, got better and better and better and better. What influence did Paul C. have on you? <laughs> Big influence. Um, it, that's when, really, to me, in my eyes, when production started to change after Marley discovered sampling. You know what I'm saying? And I think Paul C. was was going in on my, like finding like samples that weren't weren't people weren't using or people ain't know about you know digging and finding stuff and he was one of those people that to really jump start um the beginning of of, of how production was changing you know what i mean and um you know what we was able to sample at the time and you know just always surprising with what he's done from like Supernova uh, Super Lover C and, and Casanova Rut and um, Ultra Magnetic the list goes on and on man and um, I was introduced to Paul C's music by the Lawrence Professor so what can you say about the competitiveness of the 90s and trying to find that perfect that perfect sample 
I mean, it was it was magical at that time, man, because things were really natural, you know, uh, uh, the way we went about making music. And, um, you know, and we was on a hunt now since we knew that there was a world sea, a, a sea of, 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 of music out there that people never heard, you know. Then we just got on missions to, to find that stuff and bring it to light, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and those were one of the important things and rules that we applied to the game was, you know, being original. What would you say is one of the craziest digs you were ever on? And now that, you know, you ask me that question now with what I got and what I know now, it's just like, shh, man, so much. But um, one of the first and maybe the illest that I found back in the days probably had to been like Stark Reality double album that was very expensive and then the Tom Scott record which was loaded to me and my you know from what my ears hear it's a that album is a loaded album and um to me those two right there was like some of the illest Tom Scott one of the most important right yeah, like, yeah. how did they like when you first put that on and you heard mm -hmm. those horns like what went mm -hmm. through your mind uh -huh. like an emotional streak you know what I'm saying um, when I first heard it because a friend of mine passed away Trouble T-Roy so he was in the group Heavy D and the boys and um, he was his dancer and they had a freak accident he fell 20 feet and died you know what I'm saying and that kind of just shook us up shook up the whole community he was very close to everyone you know in, in our community in our media community and um it was just like a, a depressing time, and, you know, when, when I, I found the record, I just kind of listened to the whole song, kept listening to the whole song. It did something to me from the first time I heard it, like the first time I played it. I, mean, I just kept playing it over and over again. I started getting emotional and then, um, you know, something was, was going on inside of me. Um, you know, next thing you know, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm saying to myself, I should try to do, put this together. And that's what I did. And, you know, I heard some elements in the song that I was like, wow, this is dope. This is dope. I already knew that um, Black Sheep had used it, but they only used like the beginning part of, of, of the record. But I actually heard more in the record. So I just kind of wanted to, you know, bring that out. It, it, it does. It screams emotion that song and I think what's crazy about it is that depending on people's ages like it really is like one of the most enduring kind of symbols of that era I, I think you know it's Thanks. possibly one of the great it's, there's no question it's got to be one of the greatest hip hop songs ever made you know what I mean and, and I mean there's there's obviously Trouble T. Roy um, and even for anyone that doesn't know Trouble T. Roy it's just feels like the ultimate R.I.P. song for anybody you lost when you hear that song. And it also yeah. kind of feels like there's this extra layer of kind of like this era that's kind of lost too when you hear that song. So, I mean, that song hits on a lot of levels, man. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah. a lot of people tell me good things about it, you know, since for years and years now and what it's done for them, you know, from cats in, in, in prison to, you know, people in the street just and fans and, you know, just, I was glad I was able to make that and now it's a mark on a good mark on the world you know when you listen to it